All right, so just a quick review. So we're gonna be doing the half angle formula. So start with the half angle formula. So we're gonna derive the other way of doing the half angle formula. So always, always have your sheet out. Where's my sheet? This is algebra. I thought I opened up the pre-calculus one. All right, so do, do, do. have your trig notes ready. So this is just a good thing to just have open. That way you don't have to like keep all of your notes. Um, I don't know if I've ever told you guys. Um, there's guided notes here. I know Miss Anoush used to give you guys the guided notes a lot in Algebra 2, right, Nick? Okay, so if you guys are the type that really likes having like fill in the blank stuff, this is a kind of a good way to have like notes open is, I'll show you how to get there again. You just go to this little folder, hit this, and that gives you the guided notes. So we're going to start off with this equation. So the next thing that they want to do here is in order to prove this, what they want is they want to get rid of this minus sign right here. So what they're going to do, they're going to multiply it by the conjugate. So let me grab, I don't know why I can't see my mouse right now. There it is. Uh, I don't know what's going on. This is weird. Uh, I'll just use my mouse for the moment. Um, so they're going to get rid of the. So they're going to do the conjugate. Oh my gosh, I can't write with a mouse apparently. <laughs> Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Let me see what happens if I do this. Okay, that's better. Con. I don't know why my monitor affected this. So I'm going to do the conjugate. So by doing the conjugate, we want to do the opposite sign. So when we do this, this creates this one minus cosine squared. And the reason for that is this is essentially this a plus b times a minus b situation, which is a dose. So difference of squares. So we're kind of using the concept of difference of squares using the conjugate to create this part right here. It also creates a perfect square towards the bottom. So on the bottom, because it's the same thing, it's going to make this perfect square. Now, if you look at your Pythagorean identities on your formula sheet, so on your formula sheet, if you look at the Pythagorean identities, and I'll kind of explain where these ideas come from is think about it as this. You have a triangle. This is your x values. These are your y values. And this is your c. It kind of connects these. It's your hypotenuse. So if you do x squared plus y squared, you get c squared. Well, when we're dealing with a unit circle, our x is cosine squared. Our y is sine squared. And our C is our radius, which is just one squared. Because remember, it's a unit circle. Why is it a unit circle? Because the radius is one. So if you rewrote this, you could rewrite it as one minus cosine squared equals sine squared. So the whole purpose of multiplying it by the conjugate was to try to get this. Now that we have this, we just replace it with sine squared. All right, so now what we're going to try to do is we're going to take the square root. We're going to take the square root of sine squared x. Well, that just means that this square root and the squared cancel out, so you're just left with sine. And because the bottom is a perfect root, so because the bottom is already a perfect root, this squared cancels out with this squared. So you just end up with plus or minus sine x over 1 plus cosine x. Basically, they did all this work to make them perfect roots, and that's how you created the second formula. Does that make sense? 
Yes, no, maybe. Okay. So that's all they're doing. They just multiply the bottom by the conjugate. They're basically, the. I just realized the reasoning why they did this isn't because it's a conjugate. It's because they're like, I want to make this a perfect square. So I'm going to multiply it by itself. And it just so happens that the top becomes dose, difference of squares, because of the fact that they're the conjugate. So it's kind of, it works out that these two are conjugates of each other. All right, so moving on to the next one. Give me a second, guys. I'm going to turn my blue light filter off because I miss having two monitors. And I'm trying to use a smart board as a second monitor, but because I had the blue light filter on, the second part of the monitor didn't work out that well. Oh, it's super blurry. Well, so much for that idea. I tried. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's happening now? The fun part is when Garrett watches this on YouTube and he's like, what was he doing the whole time? <laughs> yeah, see, there's this little recording sign right here. Also, these tools right here are part of the recording tools. That's how come I'm not using annotate, I'm using these now. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for asking. <laughs> All right, and then another thing they want to do is they want to derive the third formula. This time, they are going to multiply by the conjugate. So they are going to, let's see here, they're going to do the conjugate, conjugate. So they're doing the conjugate here. What that does is that creates the dose, the difference of squares, one squared minus cosine squared here. And because we have this, this allows me to say that this is just sine. And the top, what we're going to do here, where did the top go? So that's just sine. Oh, and this sign and this sign cancel out. But since the bottom squared, so basically what's happening is we have sine x, and then we have sine squared x. So this cancels out with this. They just never explained that fact. And we're still left with the conjugate up here. And that's how you get the third formula. So then they do a summary of all the half angle identity. So these are all our of our half angles. Tangent actually has three different formulas. And they're useful in different ways. I think this one's probably the nicest because it prevents you from having like a negative or a zero. I'm sorry. It prevents you from having an undefined. Well, actually, no, it can't. Never mind. I just like this because it looks better. <laughs> but there are going to be opportunities where you might want, like, let's say you don't know what the y value is. You might want to use your sine, your cosine. Uh, if you do know it, you can kind of pick between this function or this function, whichever one you think would help you out the most. And if you need these, they should be identified. That's the double angle formula. The half angle formulas, I think, are these ones up. If I go up. These ones right here. That's some indifference. Half angles. There we go. Half angle formulas. And the alternate version of the half angles formulas are if you squared them. You have this. So this is actually the half angle formula. This is just something else you can derive from it. All right, so applying these formulas. So let's say we wanted to double an angle. So if we wanted to double an angle, we can actually use the double angle formula. So knowing what a sine is, knowing what a cosine is, that allows us to do these formulas faster. So this one, they're kind of making it easier on us. They're not making us go into the unit circle and solve for these angles. They're just kind of giving it to us. They're like, what's sine of x? It's this, what's that, that? They're not making us go into the unit circle and figure it out. 
So if we wanted to double this angle, but we still needed to find the y value. So that's what we're doing here, essentially. Let me write this down. So this is essentially saying, like, what is the y value if we double the angle? Does that make sense? Since sine is the y value, if we double this angle, we're going to figure out what's going to happen to that y. And we can use the double angle formula to help us out there. And then this other one over here, this cosine one, this one's kind of asking like, what is the uh, x value? They really should put a theta here. I don't know why these aren't thetas. What's the x value if we double the angle? So that's where these formulas kind of come into place. They help us figure stuff out. Like, let's say we calculated all of the x values and the y values, and it's like, hey, I want you to double that angle, or I want you to cut that angle in half. Cutting the angle in half doesn't necessarily mean that we're just cutting the x value in half or we're doubling the y value or whatever. Stuff happens because of the ratios. So that's where these double angles come into place. Does that kind of make sense, like why we would need these formulas? Yes, no, maybe. Um, yeah, were you on mute? <laughs> okay. Does that make sense though, Nick? No. <laughs> why does it? Okay, so uh, the benefit of the double angle formula is like, since sine means the y value, it means like, well, what's the y value if we double the angle? Since x is the x value, it's like, well, what's the x value if we double this angle? So that's basically where these come into play. So another way is like, let's say we want to find cosine of... 160. We, we know what cosine of 165 is. Wait, hold on. What is this asking? Oh, they're doing all kinds of work here. So they're showing all this work on how to figure this out. So in order to understand this work, what's going to happen is they're like, hey, do you know that 165 is half of 330? It's like, okay. So if we want to do this, we're going to use the half angle formula. So we're going to go to our worksheet, do the half angle formula. So the half angle formula says we're going to do 1 plus the original angle divided by 2. So square root of 1 plus cosine of the original angle divided by 2. From here, we can just use the unit circle to figure out what the cosine of 30 is. So they kind of substituted it in for you. They plugged it in there. And then in order to kind of like get rid of all of this fraction, they're like, I don't like this two at the bottom here. They don't like this. So they're going to multiply everything by two on the top and everything by two on the bottom. What this does is it cancels out the two here. And this should end up being four. Well, if you notice, it's like, well, where's the 4? This was supposed to be 4. But they kind of did it very subtly. What they did here was the square root is only over this. If it had been like this, it would have been a 4. They kind of secretly took the square root of 4. All right. And the reason why we're going to do it as only negative, so replace this because... 165 degrees, where is it? Is 165 degrees on this quadrant or this quadrant? Well, it's going to be in this quadrant. So the x values are negative. So we don't really have to ask the plus or minus because we know that 165 degrees is on the negative quadrant. Does that kind of make sense? 
So from there, this is simp This is just a matter of like, okay, we can use a calculator to verify this. Um, so they're saying like, plug this in and plug this in from what we did with the, what they did over here. So it's just kind of more practice on this. Let's get into an actual problem because it's very weird kind of showing you guys what to do with these. So we're going to use the double angle formula here. So use the double angle formula to rewrite this. All right. So let's take a look at this formula. Here we have ba, 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 check your activity. Da, da, da. So what we're doing here is 1 16th v squared sine of x cosine of, well, I should use theta. Can't complain that Desmos doesn't use theta and then I don't use theta. It just makes it easier, especially since we're dealing with cosine and sine. I can talk about x freely if I'm using theta as a variable instead of x. All right, so we have that formula and use the double angle formula to rewrite this. Not sure what they mean by this, so I'm going to take a look at the double angle formula and see what they could possibly mean by using the double angle formula here. Scroll down. Where's double angle formulas? Double angle formula. Oh, I see. So it's 2 times cosine. So we're going to pretend that it's 2 times that. So give me a second. Ah, where's my mouse? There it is. So unfortunately, there's not really a 2 here. There's this 1v squared, right? All right. So instead of that 1v squared, where are you getting at? I'm going to do that. So that becomes two, 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 sine, cosine. So we're going to replace that with sine 2 theta. But since we didn't have a 2 on this side, I'm going to assume that we're going to divide by 2. And then, sorry, I'm just kind of working this out in my head while I do it. <laughs> and then we're also going to have the 1 over 16 v squared. So basically what I did is I kind of ignored this. I kind of put it off to the side and I pretended like there was a 1 sine theta cosine theta. But because of the fact that I need a 2 instead of a 1, I'm going to end up dividing this by 2. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so yeah, instead of having that 2, I'm going to pretend there's a 1. So I can't just say sine 2 theta. I'm going to place that there. So I'm going to rewrite this as, let me do this. Let me write my formula down. So I'm going to say fraction 1, 16, e control up squared, and this is going to be sine 2 theta, where's the theta at? Oh, there it is, theta. <laughs> and we're going to divide that by 2. Highlight it, put this, divide by 2. This allows me to, now I can just multiply straight across. So I end up getting this sine 2 theta. And I can technically call it v squared. So I'm going to multiply the v. So I'm just, multi all I'm doing here is I'm just multiplying across to make this one nice fraction. So by multiplying across, I do this fraction, and this becomes 32. So that's what it would be after we rewrite it.
So that's what they're doing right here. We're replacing it like that. So they kind of did it a little differently. They divided by two earlier by factoring out the two. So we can just do that. All right, so now suppose the rocket was at 15 degrees from the initial height and the velocity was this. So V is our velocity. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to plug in our V. So use our formula that we just got. So me being lazy, I'm going to copy this. I'm gonna paste it here. And I'm gonna edit this formula. So I don't need the part where I derived how I got it. What did I just do? Where's the delete button? Oh, I see what happened. I, I wanted to push delete, but I hit the page up button. All right, and then I'm gonna plug in 200 for my velocity. And I'm gonna do sine of two theta. So our initial angle was 15. Well, guess what? Doing 15 is really hard to do. So that's why they're kind of already giving me this. So two times 15 is 30. And all of this is going to be divided by 32. So this is gonna be equal to 4,000. 40,000? It's four zeros. One, two, three, four. 40,000. Okay, so 40,000 sine of 30. So again, you can look at the unit circle, but hopefully I hope that a few guys are starting to kind of understand that since 30 degrees, here's 45, here's 60. Since 30 degrees is a short angle, that means this is one half. So sine of 30 degrees is one half. Oh my gosh. Really wish this was better with the math. A normal calculator, if I did that one half, it would have already done the fraction. So we get that one half. And then we're going to divide all of this by 32. Oh my gosh. You guys, you guys know how to enter it into the thing here, right? Is it okay if I just write it by hand for you guys instead of having to type it out? Okay. okay. Are you like, I can't stand you struggling with the keyboard right now? <laughs> All right. So let me just do this. So half of 40,000 is 20,000. And then we're going to divide it by 32. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab a calculator. Luckily, this is an easy one. So I'm just going to grab it from here. One, two, three, divided by 32. So I get 65 as my answer. Don't forget to show your work. Look here. They're plugging it in. They got 625. I said 65, I'm sorry. <laughs> but this is one of those cases in which it's good to kind of have your half angle formulas because sine of 15 is hard to do, but sine of 30, you can just use a unit circle. All right, so let me scroll up. Oh, they did it for us. 150. So use the half angle formula. So they're already telling us to use the half angle formula, but we can just, if we divide this by two, we get, use the keyboard to enter it. What? I would, oh, I see. They, they mean the half angle formula as in theta divided by two. The, they gave us the half angle. We want to use the regular angle. Okay, so that being the case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our half angle formulas, which for some reason, I don't know why in this sheet, they're like super separated. So we have a few of them. Um, 
I wish we had the original ones, but use the keyboard to enter it. I'll use the hard one for now. I know there was an easier one with the sign. I'm trying to remember what it was. I'll just use the harder one. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I recommend having those written down. Oh, wait, maybe it's in the guided notes. Little formulas. Ah, here it is. These are supposed to be all of the tangent x's. All right, so you can even use the guided notes, which in this case I would because the sheet I gave you guys apparently isn't as good. So I'm going to do the sine of 30 of x. So if we double 105, that's 220. So sine of 220, take that into a fraction, and I do 1 plus cosine of 210. Close my parentheses. Y, Edmentum, that's correct. You told me to use the half angle formula. Find the exact value. Oh, to find the exact value. Oh my gosh. All right, so because Edmentum doesn't like you showing your work, which I think is dumb, um, let's figure this out. So sine of 120. So that's basically sine of 30 degrees, but in quadrant, what quadrant is this? Quadrant three, which means we have a negative answer. So 30 degrees, that's a short Y. So that's gonna be negative one half over one plus whatever the cosine is. So this is gonna be a long X value. So if this is a long x value, this should be square root of 3 over 2. And we want to get rid of this. We want to make it one nice fraction. So it becomes uh, two, 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 2 plus square root 3 over 2. What I did here basically was I just multiplied this by 2 over 2. So that 1 turned into a 2 over 2 plus that. So now I need to multiply. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my numerator, and I'm going to multiply that by my denominator flipped over, the reciprocal of my denominator. Uh, three, and there should be a plus sign here. So my answer ends up being, and hopefully they're not mean about this, but I have a feeling that Desmos is going to be mean because it's Desmos. Oh no, what happened? Okay. So, ba -ba -ba. Oh, they spoiled it. <laughs> um, so what happens here is, wait, did I flip this over correctly? I did that. I end up getting this. So the twos cancel out. And I would get 1 over negative 2 minus square root 3. But what they really want us to do is factor out that negative. And then we get 2 over this. We have to multiply it by the conjugate. Oh my gosh, there's so much work here. They're just like, yeah, it's totally that. Don't worry about it. Uh, we multiply by the conjugate, which is this. So what happens here is we end up getting 2 squared, which is 4, minus 3. So we have a 1 at the bottom. And on the top, we have the 2 minus 3 squared. It should be a plus sign. Um, this is Desmos being Desmos, guys. I'm sorry. Let me kind of sum up what they want you to do here, but they messed up on. So we need to double this angle. The double angle is 120. So then we can use any one of these formulas from the double angle formula. Um, 
I recommend using one of these two instead of this one. So I'm going to use the sine of 210 over 1. That is a plus sign, right? It is a plus sign. Plus cosine of 210. So this ends up being negative 1 half over 1 plus square root of 3 over 2, which, as I said, you can just multiply the 1 by 2 over 2. So you end up getting negative 1 half square root of 2 over 2. And then since they have the same denominator, you can just extend this. Then you're going to flip over. So you're going to do negative 1 half times 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3. This cancels out with this. So you end up with negative 1 over 2 plus the square root of 3. You're going to multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate is 2 minus square root of 3. 2 minus square root of 3. So you end up getting this negative 2 plus square root of 3 all over 4 minus 3. Where does the negative come into place? I don't know how they got a negative 3. Oh, the x is also negative. This was supposed to be a negative. I'm sorry, guys. Nick, how confused are you on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> okay. Let me, let me redo it a lot better. So the part where I messed up was 120 has a negative x and a negative y. So... If you look at a unit circle for 120, your sine should be negative 1 half. Your cosine should be negative square root of 3 over 2. Does that part make sense? And then the formula for this, we're going to, so we're going to basically call this tangent of x over 2, where x, where x is uh, 210. So that's how come I'm looking at the angle 210 here. So sine at 210 is negative 1 half. And at the bottom, we're going to do 1 plus, not plus. Oh, it is plus, but I forgot to mention that my cosine is negative. So then what happens here is we get this negative one half over one minus square root of three over two. I forgot to account for the fact that my x is negative. So from here we get negative one half over two over two minus square root of three over two. What I basically did was I changed the one to two over two. I know I've said it a hundred times. But this allows me to do this, 1 half over 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. And I'm going to rewrite this. So if you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you take your top fraction, your denominator, multiply it by your reciprocal, and this cancels out with this. So you get negative 1 over 2 square root of 3. Now the problem here is Edmentum does not like having roots at the bottom. So in order to get rid of that root at the bottom, what they're going to do here is they're going to multiply it by the conjugate. Honestly, if this was a test and you guys wrote this down, I would be like, you got it. That's right. But because we have to follow Edmentum rules, let me do this in black so you guys can see it. Since we have to follow Edmentum's rules, we have to do it this way. So what happens here is on the bottom we have, since we're using a conjugate, it's 
2 squared, which is 4, minus square root of 3 squared, which is 3, all over, distribute this negative 1, get negative 2, minus square root of 3. The bottom is just 1, so our answer is this. Did that help? Okay, so that was my bad, guys. I forgot to account for the negative, uh, the negative cosine. So on the right side of the unit circle, your cosines are negative. Right side, the cosines are negative. Um, there's like a little trick to remember it, to remembering it. I haven't done it in a while, but it's this idea called all students take calculus. Uh, it helps you remember which ones are positive. So in quadrant one, everything's positive. In quadrant two, only the sign is positive. In quadrant three, only the tangent is positive. And in quadrant four, only the cosine is positive. So that was my bad. I didn't do this. Someone else made this up, but yeah, it helps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even, like, this was one of my pre-calculus students that I tutor after school. She told me that. And I was like, oh, that, I get it. I see what you did there. All right. So looking at this one, we're obviously not going to use a double angle formula because we're not going to cut this in half. We want to, this is the half. So what angle are we actually talking about? So if this is half of an angle, we need to double this angle to figure out it's half of what angle. So let me grab a calculator here. So we're going to do 157.5 times 2. We get 315. We're doing 315. It sounds complicated, but... 315, think of it this way. This is 180 degrees. So if you add 90, you're going to go to 270. So 315 is 45 degrees, but just in quadrant uh, 4. So if it's that, then we know it's square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2, but it's in quadrant 4. So remember, quadrant four is calculus. All students take calculus. All students take calculus. Um, so that means that the cosine is positive, but the sine is negative. So this becomes, we're going to use the half angle formula for cosine. So grab our sheet or grab the guided notes, whichever you want. And we're going to use this formula. So we're going to say that it's going to be the square root. I'm just going to do it on here. And I'm going to do it in red so I can write over everything. So I'm going to say we're using this formula. And I'm going to say it's plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, what was it? cosine of 3, whatever. Well, it was 45, but it was in quadrant 4. And I know that that is just square root of 2 over 2, and I'm going to be dividing that all by 2. Well, we're doing a cosine. Cosine of 157.5. So if I look at that, my cosine at 157.5 is in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2 is negative, so I don't care about the positive version of this. I want the negative version of this. So now I have to figure out the rest of this. Well, I'm having a hard time here because I can't just add these. So I'm going to do 2 over 2 divided by 2. What I did here was I changed the 1 into 2 over 2. I'm going to take the square root, but I can't just multiply everything by 2. I also have to multiply the bottom by 2, so I end up getting the square root of 4 at the bottom. 
But remember, we did this, so this becomes the square root of 4. So if I did that, what happens here is I end up getting this square root of 2 plus square root of 2 over 2, because the square root of 2 is, let me kind of break this down a little bit more. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me go to this website and just kind of make a page just dedicated to this problem because I'm running out of room and it looks terrible. All right. So going back from the beginning, cosine of 157.5. This is going to be equal to square root of 1. 1 plus cosine or 1 minus cosine? Where's my formula? 1 plus cosine. 1 plus cosine of double the angle. Double the angle we said was 315 all over this 2. Well, cosine at 315, we do this. We go 1 plus uh, square root of 2 over 2. I don't like this 2, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything on top by 2. And I'm going to multiply everything at the bottom by 2. So what happens here is I get square root of 2 plus square root 2 because I distributed this. When I distributed to this one, the 2's canceled out. And then on the bottom I have 4. Well, this turns into square root of 2 plus square root of 2, and the square root of 4 is just 2. Now remember, these are supposed to be plus or minus, but because cosine of 157 is on the negative side for cosine, so remember the unit circle, if we're on the second quadrant, cosine is negative, then this is going to be negative square root of 2 plus square root of 2 all over 2. Does that make sense? Okay. I know I did like a lot, but I think it helped that I kind of like focused on just one sheet for this. Especially since I hate that Admentum doesn't let you like show your work. Like, they don't care about the work. They only want your answer, which is a terrible teaching philosophy. So we do a 2 at the bottom. We're going to say this is negative. So I'm going to put the negative on the outside, just make it a little less confusing. It's going to be square root of, I forgot, was it a positive or a negative? It was a positive. So we're adding the 2 plus square root of 2. All right, so we got that there. Wrong. Come on, Inventum. Why you do this to me? <laughs> Let's try this again. Let me see. Who wants a bet? It's not even that bad of a mistake. Why is it negative? Oh my gosh. Nick, how come you didn't correct me? I said it like a million times. I was like, this is negative. I blame you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I said it like so many times. It's a cosine. So, um, wait, no, it should be positive. Hold up. Hold up. No, the cosine should be positive, because if we're here, that's positive. Yeah, that's a positive. Unless it's sine. Did I use the wrong formula? Yeah, that's a cosine. Positive. Do that. There's a negative here here. We might have to come back to this one later. I'm sorry, guys. Well, you guys have the answer for it. I 
don't like how picky and mentum gets with this because if I would have shown the work, I would have gotten it right, but the mentum doesn't care about the work. Let me at least try to get to another one. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to finish double angle formulas until Wednesday. But to be fair, this is a more complicated topic. Uh, recall the standard form. So now we're just going to talk about transformations of these. A period affects the phase shift. So when it talks about phase shift, this B, the B changes how much we're going to multiply the x by. So it's going to affect how wide this period is. The c affects how far we actually move this, so how far we move to the left and how far we move to the right. So that's how come we have to do the c divided by b because we are moving the c, like we're moving whatever the c tells us to move, but the reason why we're doing the B is because we also have to multiply that C by B. So to figure out exactly how much, to figure out exactly how much we're moving, we have to take that C and divide it by B. So that's why phase shift is a little different. This is always like the trickiest part of trig is remembering that phase shift isn't just C. Normally it is, but if you have a B, that affects it. That's how come, like, let's say our B was 1. Well, if you do, and our C, let's say our C was 3. Well, 3 divided by 1 is just 3. So basically, if you don't have a B, your phase shift is whatever the C is. Does that kind of make sense? All right. That's probably a lot easier than me doing the formulas and plugging them in. All right, so let's at least get this done before we leave today. Okay, cool. It shouldn't take that long. All right, so how many full cycles complete the given interval? All right, so we're doing this formula. Below are the graphs, so there are all these graphs right here. How many cycles does each function complete? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write each one of these functions down. I'm going to write them down lower. Luckily, you guys have pen and paper. It's kind of hard for me to show this using pen and paper. So we have sine x, and then the other formulas are we also have sine 2x, and then we're also going to have sine x ah what happened here sine x divided by two okay so how many does each one have so if i'm looking at these let me get rid of this i don't like this <laughs> so if i'm looking at a regular sign a regular sign from two pi to pi is oh my gosh they're all cramped together <laughs> if basically if i'm multiplying this by two By multiplying it by 2, my x's are growing faster, right? All my inputs are growing faster. It's kind of the opposite. So if I'm dividing by 2, my period becomes shorter because I'm multiplying my x's, right? So my pi over 2, if I go from here, I'm looking at the blue one. So I should probably make my thing blue. I'm going to go one, two, so here is one complete cycle that is two complete cycles, three complete cycles, four complete cycles. So sine of 2x four cycles, sine of x. So sine of x is, we already know that's going to be the middle one, obviously. So that's going to be this bl uh, black one. And if I do the black one, the black one has one cycle.
two cycles. So sine of x has two cycles. Meaning that if we look at sine of, oops, sine of x divided by two, that has to have one cycle. So basically what we're doing here is if we have a one half, we take the inverse and that's how many cycles it has. So by doing the one half, we're essentially cutting the frequency of it in half. By multiplying it, what we end up doing is this frequency doubles. It becomes a lot more frequent. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of weird because the way I explained it in the other slide made it seem like if we're multiplying it, it becomes wider. Um, what I kind of meant to say and like I realize that now as like they're ma they're splitting it up all nicely is it the it multiplies like how many times we go around Does that kind of make more sense all right and then what characteristics is changed by dividing by two um, by dividing it by two we have, uh, what was it called? We have longer periods, so less cycles. Uh, when we multiply by two, when we multiply by two, we have shorter periods shorter periods so uh, less cycles and that all comes from this formula where is it uh, the formula that we had before the c divided by b is we're kind of taking our x and dividing it by b so since there's a two here we're going to take our period and divided by two because there's no c to really multiply by our period and if we're doing x over two that means we're going to take our period and multiply by two does that make sense all right guys well, we'll finish up on Wednesday because we only have 10 slides left. I'm sorry, like, I don't know what was going on with the math there, but I'll fix the setup for the school a little bit better. <laughs>